Hey everyone, welcome to A Planetary Diary, episode two. I'm your host, Eric Moran, the creator of A Planetary Step. With me today, we have our special guest, Aaron Lunger, who is our prop designer for all the props for A Planetary Step. Hey, how you doing today, Aaron? I'm doing good, and how are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, I wanted you to get take the time to dive into what made you decide to start making props. So I started out, you know, doing the normal cosplay thing, making props for the costumes that I make, you know, making the costumes themselves. And that's just evolved over the five or six years that I've been doing it to becoming more and more elaborate with each costume and each prop and, you know, adding things like, you know, lights, um, making things mechanized where things will open and close if you push a button, you know, just the normal things that you kind of progress through as you go through that process. And what motivated you to start making props in the first place? Uh, I just enjoyed the prop aspect of it. You know, it's one of those things where you're creating something that you can emulate some object you see in a movie, in a video game, you know, or in an anime, you know, and trying to, you know, do your best to actually make something that looks as possibly, you know, as close to the original that you've seen in the content as possible. And, you know, that's a e never ending process where you're trying to get, say, the, the chrome aspect on a sword so that it actually, you can see re your reflection in the sword or getting, you know, uh, the lights on a costume to light up a, a particular way so that it mimics the content that you're trying to mimic, uh, you know, and it's just a never ending process trying to figure out a different way or a better way or to get the exact look that you're looking for for something. What is it that is your biggest challenge? What has been like one of your major challenges in making these kind of props and everything? Um, usually it just comes down to either powering it, you know, whether it's a battery source or making the light emit in some way for a prop, you know, to get it to have a certain look that you're looking for, or even just to get everything to fit inside whatever the prop is. You know, the latest thing for me has been swords a lot and fitting, you know, enough power in there to light it up and have it stay lit for a couple hours, you know, at a time without having to have it charged. Uh, it becomes a huge problem because, you know, you have, say, 300 LEDs in a, in a sword that's lighting it up. And, you know, how do you power that for, you know, a couple hours on just a couple batteries? And it's, it's not an easy problem to solve. What was your biggest, like, your biggest, like, like your biggest challenge? Um, in almost every single project, especially when it deals with lighting, it's almost always, how do I have enough power to make it last as long as I want to last? Um, that was probably the biggest issue with, uh, as you remember, my Tron costume. Uh, that costume had, I want to say, somewhere on the verge of 800 to 1,000 LEDs throughout the entire costume. You know, and how do you power that many LEDs for, say, five hours without having to switch out battery packs and take off half the costume to do it in the process? Um, you know, for example, just the main costume without the helmet and the discs, I had five different battery packs in my costume, each one weighing about, you know, a pound or two. You know, so you figure you got five pounds worth of batteries, maybe up to 10 pounds worth of batteries on your costume besides the costume itself, which is full armor, you know, so that costume was really challenging in that respect. And then on top of that, you know, part of it is making the lights look the way that you want them to look and figuring out how to get that effect, you know, because with Tron, their costumes were very, uh, very well lit. You know, it was, you couldn't see individual points of light. It was just, it was one panel of light from head to toe. You know, and, and that's one of the other aspects of it is figuring out how do I get it with a bunch of little lights to make it look like it's one panel that's all lit up. Were you working on any other film projects or have you done other film projects in the past? Uh, so previously I had done some uh, various parts for costume. Uh, as you know, Vincent, he does his uh, Surge of Power. He does that, his Surge of Power costume, and he actually commissioned me to make the uh, the gauntlets that he has for his current uh, costume. So I, I completely designed them in CAD myself, 3D printed them, finished them, and added all the details that he wanted to it. Uh, now he actually has commissioned me to do some other props for um, other parts of his, his show now that he runs. And I'm in the process of still uh, 3D printing those and 
still actually I have, I have to design some parts as well in CAD. What was the process in you coming up with the phasers, uh, with the medical uh, computer, uh, tricorder computer, all that kind of stuff? What was like the process? What, how, how long did it take you to put that all together? So I, I just took some simple LEDs and simple switches and wired everything up so that it's very simple and static. For the phaser, there's an LED on the top that as soon as you power it on, the LED on top comes on. And then the button for the actual, you know, firing mechanism actually has a switch inside it that will then turn the LEDs on the very front of it on, almost like you are firing it. For the tricorder, uh, it's, it actually always has power applied to it, but unless you're actually pushing, so there's two side buttons, and the left side button will actually cause the tricorder then to extend, and you'll have that small little screen extend on the front of it as well as the button on the right side then is actually what turns on the LEDs for both the, the large screen in the center as well as the extended screen. And again, that's just simple LEDs that are all wired up. So Aaron, this, I mean, everything is great. I mean, I can't wait to even see more what props you come up with for the series and everything. Now, where can people follow your work? Because not only are you a prop maker, but you're also a cosplayer, a well-known cosplayer. So where can people follow you at on social media? So what I go by Wasteland Creations on Facebook. I also have a Wasteland Creations as well as my name, Aaron W. Lunger, for Instagram. I generally stick more to Facebook when I'm doing things just because it's easier for me. And honestly, I don't post quite as much because, in all honesty, I'm very busy doing things for people. So it's <laughs> hard to post things at the same time. So Aaron, thank you so much for coming on to the show, you know, and giving everyone an insight of what it's like to put together and design props for a fan series like ours. And I want to thank everyone for tuning in for episode two. Stay tuned for next week for episode three, where we're going to dive in even more deeper into the series. This is Eric Moran signing out and thank you all again. And show loads, you guys. <laughs>